Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today, we're learning all about surface tension. We're gonna be showing you easy surface tension demonstrations that you can do at home that your kids will enjoy. We'll be showing you the science behind surface tension, and we'll be showing you a way that you can use the results from today's demonstration to introduce the concept of bar graphs to your kids. Chances are that you've observed the effects of surface tension already. It's pretty common to see the effects of surface tension in lakes and pools when you're looking at leaves, debris, and even small insects floating by. You can even float a paperclip on top of a glass of water. If a water's bond is strong enough to hold leaves, debris, and small insects, can it hold me up? Cannonball! I confirmed three things by doing that demonstration. Number one is... White men can't jump. Number two is I most definitely break the bonds of surface tension. And number three, it was legit 56 degrees outside that day. I really wish I had done this demonstration in the summertime. So cold. So stay tuned. Today we'll learn all about surface tension. So why should we study water? Well, it's one of the coolest molecules on Earth. It's the only substance known whose solid form is less dense than its liquid form. And what does that mean? Ice floats. And if water behaved like every other molecule that we know of, our lakes and oceans would essentially stay frozen and Earth would nearly be uninhabitable. Well, ice floats in water, but for example, solid gold will not float in liquid gold. So to illustrate the point about the gold, I'm gonna to go to my local bank and buy one for the demonstration. How you doing? Can I buy a small bar of gold, please? It costs how much? Can I borrow one? Okay, so not only were are we not getting gold, we were not so politely asked to vacate the premises. And instead of getting gold, I'm gonna use this as a reminder. If you have not subscribed to our channel, we do weekly videos, hit the subscribe button down below. For this demonstration, all you really need are some pennies, medicine dropper, and some water. Really, any coin will do, but how often do you get to use a penny? In addition to water, to see the effect of varying strengths of surface tension, you can use other solutions around the house as well. So in addition to water, we use olive oil and some dish soap. So for this super easy demonstration, all you have to do is use the medicine droppers for them to suck up some water, and then just count how many drops they can put on one penny. My kids tried to make the drops as small as possible, so obviously your results may vary. My daughter was able to get about 45 tiny drops of water onto her pen. I, on the other hand, was only able to get about 28 before it began to spill. And as we mentioned earlier, if you use different solutions around the house, your kids will be able to see that different solutions have different surface tension strengths. Okay, now it's time to talk some science. And first, we're gonna to need to make a water molecule. To make a water molecule, of course, you're gonna need some hydrogen and some oxygen. Specifically, we're gonna need two hydrogens and one oxygen atom. What's cool is every time a water molecule is made, they form a triangle shape. Always gonna have one oxygen and two hydrogens looking something like this. All right, now we're gonna need some more water molecules and let's put them in a glass. Now we have our water molecules and we're gonna focus on the ones at the surface and how they interact with the ones below them. Interestingly, water molecules in some ways behave like magnets in that they attract each other. Let's zoom in. Let's just focus on nine water molecules. You'll see the molecule in the middle has to share its force with all the molecules around it, while the molecule in the top middle doesn't have to share any force with water above it. Because it doesn't have to share as much as the other molecules beneath it, its attractive force, or what's called the cohesive force, is much stronger than the ones below it. That is what creates surface tension. You can even do a similar demonstration with just a glass of water and some pennies. All you have to do is fill a water jug or bottle or glass all the way to the top until it's about to spill over and then stop. And then you can just have your kids place a penny in the glass jar one at a time and count how many pennies they can place until the water starts to spill over. 
When the water spills over, that'll be the point when the force of gravity finally becomes stronger than the water's surface tension cohesive force. And unfortunately, we actually ran out of pennies before that happened. Because if homeschooling wasn't hard enough, try doing a demonstration involving pennies during a national coin shortage. Thanks, coronavirus. Another cool demonstration you can do is see what kind of objects around the house you can float. Now they do have to be small and lightweight. These were actually coated and turned out to be too heavy. So I used some thin copper wire from our How to Make Electromagnets episode. I'll leave a link in the description below. You should check that out. And the last thing we're going to say about surface tension is the fact that you can change it by altering the substance. So in this case, we have our copper wire floating in the water and we're going to add some Dawn dish soap. Dawn dish soap serves as a surfactant. And a surfactant is anything that lowers the surface tension of a substance. So as you can see here, we have our copper wire floating along and I'm going to add the dish soap. What this is doing is lowering the surface tension of the water and after a while, as you can see, our copper wire drops to the bottom. I also illustrate this in our five kitchen science experiments and I'll leave a link to that demonstration as well. That has some other super fun things you can do around the house for your homeschooling. And this is also an excellent opportunity to introduce the concept of graphing to your older kids. Today we're going to be making a bar graph, which traditionally has an x-axis and a y-axis. All you have to do is have your kids place the different variables that you used in your experiment down on the x-axis and the number of drops on the y-axis. Well, that's it for today's lesson. We learned all about surface tension, making bar graphs, and overall had a great time. And the worksheet for this video will be out pretty soon. All you have to do if you're not doing it already is go to www.homeschools. Stay. Nobody says www anymore. All you have to do is go to our website, homeschoolscienceclub.com, and you can download the assessment for your children to do after watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day, everyone. See you next week.